Well, this is my Toyota Starlet. Um, I'll just give you a quick overview of it in a bit of a walk around. I haven't had it that long, I haven't really driven it to be honest with you. I bought it, sort of had it delivered and now it's uh, in my garage. So we'll start with uh, the condition of it. We have a quick look here, you can see the indicator's a bit loose at the bottom, it's sort of held in by a screw at the top, but uh, there's a plastic peg at the bottom that snaps, so I'll have to look at that. Bit of a dent on the wing there, nothing too serious, it's not particularly deep, so like I say, that could do with fixing, but we'll have to see what we're going to do with it because I quite like the idea of keeping it fairly standard, sort of sleeper looking on the outside um, and having all the work done under the bonnet. So we should have a quick walk round really. Bit of a scratch on the bum butt. See, it wouldn't have been too bad if they'd have left it. I mean, it looks like someone's rubbed it against a brick wall really when they were parking, but. And the other issue with it is they decided to colour it in with uh, what appears to be sort of blue paint from a tin rather than the sort of correct spray paint that's actually the right colour code for the car. So, yeah, that probably would look better if they'd have just left it alone, but here's what it is. Bit of a scuff on the side of the bumper there, but nothing too serious. Nothing that uh, can't be painted or just left, I guess. It has alloys, 13 inches of... Uh, Wanda and uh, well some pretty basic tyres don't even know if I can read that name PASIC PASIO tyres apparently on this 145-80-13s um, actually quite like the side stripes on it so moving to the inside pretty basic interior to be honest with you Keep fit windy windows, uh, no fog lights, no rev counter. So yeah, pretty basic instruments, but the good thing is, I mean, it's only done 42,000 miles, which is great. And the rest of it seems to sort of support that, to be honest with you. It's just been driven by some old lady and uh, wouldn't say it's been particularly well looked after, but uh, it's not in bad condition and the low mileage is certainly a good thing. Original tape deck people remember tapes and it's a double slot or a double din I guess you'd say although like I say I haven't investigated too far into what you can do with that but like I say there's a blanking plug for that one um, no air con um, manual adjust windows but at least they've still got the stalks in it so there we are pretty crazy pattern but you do kind of get that with these age of Japanese car really Moving around to the back, as you can see I've already removed the bumper to do some repair work. Um, I've got some other footage that I took on my camera phone when I first started playing about with this, which will probably get cut in now. Um, so yeah, excuse the quality of the footage, it was done on my camera phone before I got my GoPro. So a quick update, got the bumper off, which isn't that difficult, basically. There's three bolts in this side, two short ones there and one long one up here. I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but there's one long one that goes up in there. These two out first, then you can move the plastic shield out of the way. And then once the plastic shield's out of the way, you can access that bolt, which is longer than the others. At least this panel still says Toyota on it, that's something, I guess. Um, as we can see, now the bumper's off. Turns out that uh, the previous owner of this vehicle wasn't particularly great at reverse parking. So there's one little dent there, which basically, believe it or not, that is the uh, bumper support so there's a little bit of a ding there a little bit of a ding there as well quite a ding there that must have been a post and that does line up with some damage on the bumper the rest of it seems okay there's no serious corrosion no serious biffs i mean there's a bit of a ding there as well but um it's not the end of the world kind of thing so generally pretty solid this looks like this looks factory to me thankfully it doesn't like a big patch put on there or anything but uh but yeah there we go and there's obviously to get the bumper off there's another bolt under here let me try and find it on the camera there we are there's another bolt there in the center mine mine had actually snapped the plastic off so it was just holding a piece of plastic to it and there's another three bolts here one and then one in the middle and then the third one over on that corner so basically you do your sides first and your bottom there's also some plastic clips under here on either corner there's some plastic clips on here under either corner as well which you need to pop out mine already broken off so there you go um so yeah 
do all the sides and the bottom first, then take the three top ones out, and then basically you can slide it down and away, and you don't have to take the uh, plastic side guards, side guards out of the uh, inside. You can just about see the uh, side guards there, and that's where two of the bolts go, and then the third one, third one, the long one comes up through the top there. Like I say there's a plastic clip there, plastic clip there, and there's supposed to be a big one in the middle. But uh, as you can see, mine was already cracked off and just bolted to the car. Um, there's nothing else inside. This is pretty much just a thin old, thin old piece of plastic, basically. But you can kind of line up some of the paint damage. Come on, focus. You can line up some of the paint damage on the bumper, which uh, lines up quite nicely with some of the dents on the car. But um, no horror stories really so um to replace the light clusters these are replacement light clusters which probably won't be on that footage but like i say the best thing about this one is they're not as cracked as the old ones were and don't have mold growing in them or pretty much fungus in fact was growing in them it wasn't just sort of like slightly green or whatever it was uh yeah it was pretty pretty grotty sort of fungus actually growing in the uh, bottom of the reverse light there and as i said before the other replacement as well this light was cracked right across here and that's a replacement got both of those off of ebay so that's all good moving around to this side it's all pretty good it's all pretty straight there's no real dings or dents all the panels line up the panel gaps are nice um the roof does have i have to be able to pick it up but uh the lacquer because obviously it's a metallic with a lacquer um, some of the uh, spots on the roof as you can see the lack is starting to peel off on them and uh, but generally all things considered it's in pretty good condition quite happy with it they're only 1.3 litres uh, four cylinder 16 valves um, 75 horsepower from the factory uh, the colour is uh, the code's 8k9 which is known as purplish blue mica metallic so it's it starts off purplish blue but as you can see when the sun fades it ends up more of a sort of a light silvery blue which doesn't really bother me it's i don't think you'd be able to cut it back anyway simply because it's a metallic so it's got a lacquer on it um as you can see from here this is the original color where the number plate was and where the sun faded the rest of the car this is turning into this sort of silvery blue color it's more apparent with the sun on it um that's why sort of the lower bumper support looks very purple and this panel looks a bit more blue but at the end of the day you can see the difference there where the number plate is uh, protected obviously from the sun slightly um the good thing about it is all of the all of the glass has still got the original number plate etched into it even the headlights because they've obviously got glass lenses they're still have, um the same ones the original ones which have got uh, the number plate etched into it as well which is great so there's a little bit of rust let's try and get a torch over here so we can see it a bit better There's a little bit of rust down here in this section sort of hiding underneath this piece of trim it sort of goes in a line across here and as you can see there's a little bit of uh, a rust line across here where people get in and out and drag their feet on it um that's pretty much it i really do quite like the boot popper and the uh fuel flap popper as well that's quite a quite a japanese thing i remember an old nissan bluebird i had um, or drove, was driven around in as a kid, it was my mum's car and uh, that had those two things on there and I thought they were the coolest things, um, like I say. So that's about it really for the, uh, the walk round. I'll show you under the bonnet because it's uh, pretty dirty. Whoever owned this beforehand, let's just say someone's nana wasn't particularly up on their servicing. So I just wanted to clean it up basically to uh, remove the 20 years of dust and grime that's on the engine. I mean, when you start taking the engine to bits or uh, certainly taking inlets and exhausts off and stuff, you don't really want all the dust and grime and junk that's been accumulating on it for years to fall in to the insides of the engine basically. So it's not going to be show shine or concourse or anything. All I'm trying to do is just make it cleaner than it was. So first thing I started off, all I did was just get a cheap old paintbrush 
and uh, as you can see rather poorly cut it down so it was a bit stiffer um, all that does is stiffen up the bristles a bit so you can actually sort of brush off most of the dust and dirt from the engine bay um, so now I've brushed off all the loose dirt I'm going to hoover it up um, once that's all cleaned and out of the way then we can move on to actually cleaning the uh, cleaning the surfaces okay so that's the engine bay tidied up and cleaned I say it's certainly not a concourse finish but it's uh, the paintwork is no longer covered in dust and dirt and Christ knows what and uh, seems to have come up quite nicely it now looks more like a 42,000 mile engine bay than it did before I mean 23 years of uh, God knows what under there was um, starting to get a bit grim really but like I say I've cleaned up the majority of it um, pretty easy to do really only had to take off a couple of bits to gain access like I say the battery is going to come out I've noticed the front of the battery's got a bit of a bulge in it obviously so I don't want that so that's going to come out and get replaced um, cleaned up all the top of the radiator and everything all the hoses um, pretty simple stuff really the engine itself I haven't actually worked on yet because that's going to need a bit more more than just a quick spruce up um, the rocker cover is going to get painted anyway and because it's corroded it's going to have to come off and then be cleaned with a wire brush to uh, get rid of all of the um, sort of oxidization that's on it um, same thing with the manifold but uh, it's certainly a lot more presentable than it was I've got rid of all the major dirt and grot basically it's taken near enough two hours and uh, I don't know if it shows up on the camera or not but it is a heck of a lot better than it was um, so yeah quite pleased with it really um, plenty of uh, plenty of rags used and uh, it's looking pretty good this water bottle wasn't at the expansion tank wasn't actually attached properly as well so when I took that off to clean it I uh, tucked the little tab in that was missing I also noticed while I was rooting around in here I've got this random plug don't know if it's going to show up on the camera I've got this random plug in here and uh, don't know what that's supposed to be attached to but I'll find out from the uh, wiring what that's supposed to be on and there's also another one sitting in here it uh, almost looks like it might reach together, so I don't know whether I'm brave enough to click that together just yet to see exactly what happens, but at least if I find out what the wires do, I'll know what uh, what the intended outcome is. It could be for something like an uh, air conditioning fan that I don't have, because obviously the car doesn't have air conditioning, so it might be just like a spare loom uh, plug for that, so we'll have to have a look. But uh, also notice there's a, um, a bit of condensation inside this headlight, but only taking apart and... Uh, resealing i don't really want to change them because like i say they're all original to the car and they've still got the uh, the correct registration number on them so i don't know i mean trust me i'm not a numbers matching guy really but um it seems a shame to remove it um being as it's uh it's pretty much as original it's going to get um so yeah quite happy with that still got the the underside of the bonnet which i probably should have done first because when i clean that i know i'm going to drop more crap on there but a quick blowout should get rid of all of that so yeah i'm going to give that a quick clean under there next um but the rest of it i'm actually really happy with well, just to finish off the uh, engine detailing video, this is the uh, cleaner that I used for it. It's the uh, Miguez Quick Mist and Wipe Detailer. It says it uh, enhances gloss between waxing, ideal for fast touch-ups. I hadn't obviously cleaned and washed the engine bay at any point, so I wouldn't really suggest using it on really heavily soiled stuff because you will end up dragging it around. But the idea of this is essentially that you spray it on and it lifts up any of the dirt and dust that's actually on there and then uh, once it's sort of floated it off of the surface really you get yourself a microfiber cloth and uh, just sort of wipe it away really don't forget to use plenty of this sort of spray on quite liberally that'll help obviously lift any of the contaminants and dirt and dust off of it and obviously the previous stage I showed you that I brushed it all off all the loose dirt and dust I could get off of it I brushed it all so it was loose and then vacuumed that out of the way so it would have been only sort of light sort of dust and dirt really there wasn't really too much you don't want the whole car to be covered in sort of dirt and grime and real bad sort of sand particles because you know no matter what you do when you sort of rub that around with a cloth it will obviously damage your paint but being as all of this is under the engine bay and it really wasn't that grimy and like I say I'd removed all the particles really with brushing and the, and the vacuuming beforehand this was just there to clean up the dust and dirt really so if it's just a, a bare metal surface, either, like I say, the aluminium rocker cover or the intake manifold, it's just had some oil on it, basically. So I sprayed it on with a brake cleaner and just sort of generally mopped up what was left with another microfiber cloth.